Good morning. Thanks for still being here with us on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And that's our segment on The Breakfast where we take a look at the stories making headlines in Nigeria today. We've invited Mr. Ademola Akimbola, uh, the publisher of The Podium Media. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Happy New Month, viewers. Same to you. All right. Let's go straight into um, the daily independent newspaper. The headline here reads, How Conflicting Interest led to suspension of 280 million US dollars passport insurance scheme. That's the daily independent newspaper. Governor Koa here says, Southern governors all critics, no apologies. Open grazing ban restructuring. Ohaneze condemns ACF's Southeast travel advisory to northerners. Also, constitutional review. Akere Dulu calls for scrapping of Senate. Buhari says, desperate power seekers plotting my administration's failure. A Kitty Varsity professor suspended over alleged sexual abuse. APC presidential hopefuls move to install loyalists in National Working Committee. Niger school abduction. Government confirms bandits arrest. Neko registrar died of national, natural causes and Neko uh, and a family. So that's a... Uh, you know, adding more clarity to the story there. After news reporter Elias said he had been assassinated um, in the dead of the night. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. All right, the Nigerian Tribune uh, coming up next. Um, we can see on the screen, it's going to be up uh, in a few seconds. Yes, as you, there it is. Uh, Shock awaits those who want to destroy my government. That's from President Buhari. Uh, says burning of INEC offices won't stop elections. Insecurity. We're tired of observing one minute silence, says uh, Senate President. Constitution Review, Rotimi Akiridulu calls for part time, uh, you know, cameral federal parliament. Also, a uh, 90 year old commits suicide in Kaduna. Amoteko arrests suspected retro killer, recovers human skull, bones, guns, and charms. Federal government accelerates local COVID 19 vaccine pr uh, production. And also agitations, good for development, part of democracy, Bauchi government declares. We can also see police uh, guard Neko Registrar's residence in Mina, as the son says his father died during a brief illness. And uh, we can also see uh, uh, Shei Makinde slashes Lao Tech tuition fees by 25%. Senate approves federal poly um, Ilaro to become a university. Southeast governors call for probe into Gulag's death. And um, only 1,700 oil reserves producing out of 7,000 discovered. And that's from uh, the federal government. The, all right, uh, I think these are the stories we can share on the Tribune this morning. On the Punch newspaper, stop threats. PDP tells Buhari as federal government again promises tough actions. President blames politicians jostling for power, says it will be hard on troublemakers. Also, the PDP says, lead battle against insecurity. Match words with action. Enough of threats. Above the headline on the Punch newspaper, external reserves dropped by $640 million in May. That's according to the CBN. Senate threatens arrest of 56 MDA chiefs over probe. Federal government says, we're reviving grazing reserves in 21 states. 2023 constitutional crisis looms over a tax. INEC alerts Buhari. <clears throat> Scrap Senate, make National Assembly part time to reduce governance cost at Kiri Dulu. Oil prices rises above, eight, seven, above $70. OPEC projects demand growth. Also, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, I saw Oshomale Izeyamo's congratulatory messages on social media. That's according to Obasaki. And we can see a picture here of a rally um, with uh, the PDP flag. Apparently supporters of Obasaki there celebrating his victory at the Supreme Court. Also on the Punch newspaper, Buhari congratulates NGE as Isawin's second term. Rector excited as Senate OK's Ilaro Polytechnic's upgrade to university. Emo fleeing inmates steals Lagos church members' belongings during vigil. Businessman accuses policemen of assault, extortion of $5,500 Bitcoin. 
foyer suspends lecturer over alleged sexual harassment, another under probe. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, bandits confirm kidnap of 156 Niger pupils, demand 110 million naira ransom. Wow, I think that, uh, that's quite contradictory after we just saw that um, one of the bandits was arrested and now a demand for ransom. Well, the nation, uh, news was, uh, um, I think, our final paper this morning. Buhari to arsonist and killers, agitators, I will shock you. Also on the nation, anti-graft war, customs CG, top uh, officers to declare <laughs> assets. Controversy over NECO registrar's death. Editors urged to join government in fight against fake news. McIndy slashes loud tuition by 25%. Also, Quara governor and PDP disagree on achievements. Uh, toll likely to return on federal highways. Um, 110 million naira ransom for school kids. That's also in the, in the news this morning. Insecurity won't define our administration, says the, says the federal government. And there also Amoteko arrest suspected body parts dealer in Ibadan. Six killed in Kaduna. Uh, no excuses, but President uh, tells service uh, chiefs and uh, IG. Attacks on INEC facilities won't affect future polls. Mr. Kimwala, good morning once again. Uh, I think we will start with um, the federal government saying insecurity won't define our administration. Um, there's, you know, roughly two years left in the administration. Uh, do you think that, you know, something else will be able to define the administration of the, or the current administration? Absolutely nothing. Uh, insecurity has already defined this administration. Um, I said it sometimes here that no matter what you achieve in other areas, if you cannot secure lives and properties, then you haven't achieved anything. Okay. Um, the way I see Nigeria today, I see something like a four-way battle for the soul of Nigeria. Okay, just like the Berlin Conference of 1886 or thereabouts is come for Africa. The four-way uh, battle for Nigeria, you have the bandits, you have the criminals, the kidnappers, you have restructuring agitators, I pub, Sunday go. You have governors, especially certain governors who have been pitted against their northern counterparts on open grazing. Then, of course, you have the presidency struggling to hold on to whatever is left for Nigeria. So you, you you just look at what the minister said, I just laugh. Okay, you are telling us that we shouldn't use security to judge the government, other achievements. Which other achievements? We're not seeing any we can't see any achievement. Okay, the economy is not doing well. There's no there's no there's no stability in exchange rate, insecurity is the order of the day. What else are we going to use to judge this government? So I think that's just a sound bite that we should you know. It's, it's just the way the president was sounding off yesterday. Okay, um, you want to shock them? Yeah, we look forward to that shock. Okay, it's long overdue. People really want to see government taking action. Okay, not sounding off, not issuing threats. We want to see action. So, and well, each time the president comes out to issue a threat, the bandits, the criminals, the kidnappers, they have a way of responding. So I, I, I pray that in another two or three days, something terrible will not happen. It's yeah, like but, but, they have Mr. a way Mr. of Kimbala, testing government's mind, testing government's commitment. Mr. Kimbala, okay. um, yeah. yes, you know, it, it says, you know, I think it's on the Tribune yeah. uh, that, uh, or the nation, um, it is reported as it will shock them. But, you know, if you look at the tweets and of, or also the video clip, you know, from where the president yeah. made that statement, he called, you know, and, you know, uh, spoke about the civil war spoke about, you know, the experiences in the civil war and then says, you know, we'll treat them in a language that they understand yeah. or that we understand. That doesn't seem like it is directed at the bandits or the criminals and those who are destroying, uh, you know, um, uh, government facilities. It seems, because I, I, I'm trying to link, you know, both of them to the civil war. How, how do those two things uh, come together? What, what the president was trying to say is that for those who are sponsoring terrorism, for those who are backing all these bandits, the government will come after them, those who are financing them, this government will come after them. Linking that to civil war is like saying, look, we've been through a 30 month civil war, okay? No nation survives two civil wars. So it's probably trying to let people know that, look, if we continue this way, we'll end up having a civil war. But unfortunately, Nigeria is already at war with itself. 
Okay, Nigeria is at war with itself. I, 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 I talk about the four-way battle for the soul of Nigeria. Okay, so what the president is trying to say is that look, we've been through this before. Let's slow down. Do not let us let this degenerate further. But see, you need to do something. You need to take certain actions for peace to return to Nigeria. There has to be justice. Okay, there has to be stability. All these ethnic um, uh, inclination towards so public amendment must stop. Everybody in Nigeria has lost confidence, has lost hope in that entity called Nigeria. Project Nigeria does not fascinate for any longer. Most people, they may not come out to openly call for restructuring, but people are beginning to say, look, what exactly are we getting from being together? Okay, I'm not advocating for us to, I mean, to, 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 to to, to be divided, but if you if you also link it to what Governor Akredolu said, asking for a unicameral legislature, ask that the Senate should be struck. I totally support that call, okay? Because it's like the National Assembly has had no effect. Hmm. We haven't felt the impact in any way, okay? I said earlier on that a National Assembly that is up and doing should have put a lot of heat on the president to either resign or perform. So for me, it's neither here nor there. It's okay. time for us to face the reality that things are not working the way it should be working. And the president, to me, has come to his wit's end. I do not know of any new thing that this, this administration will come up with to reverse the, 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 the trend. I do, I do not know. All right. Okay? I do not know. I, 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 I do not see anything new that, that they want to say or that they want to do. Yeah. So still talking about, you know, security matters in Nigeria. Uh, we're seeing two uh, conflicting um, headlines about the same story in Niger State. Recall that about 200 students had been abducted from an Islamic school in the state. Yeah. And here um, on the Daily Independent newspaper, the headline, you know, told us that Niger school, it says Niger school abductions, government confirms bandit arrest. And when I read the story, the Niger state government, you know, was assuring Nigerians that we have some of the bandits in our custody. We will not pay ransom. We will get the children released safe and sound. But on the Punch newspaper, um, another source here says, bandits confirm kidnap of 156 Niger pupils demand 110 million naira ransom so I, I don't know what the information is and um if mm. indeed the government just like they said have some of the bandits in their custody why can't they force out a confession of the location and you know uh, release the students mr akimbola yeah absolutely the the the, the, the most important thing for the parents of this case is for them to be released whether the bandits have been arrested or not whether they are asking for ransom or not, we want the kids to be released, and that is when we take them seriously. At this point, you can't rule out propaganda, you can't rule out information management, okay? Um, truth is always the first casualty when crisis of this nature um, happen. So until the kids are released, we do not want to believe anything that is coming from the government. The media also needs to be very careful in reporting stuff like this. Okay, um, we shouldn't take every press statement of every press release that government officials send to us. We shouldn't take them as 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 as, as the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll be misleading people and we 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 will be unfairly seen or judged, not to be uh, cooperative with society uh, in fighting criminality. So yeah. it's unfortunate that we have this conflicting report, but I I think we should, we, we should keep our focus on getting the kids released until they are released. We can't believe anybody. Well, okay, um, so that's the situation we are in today. So I, 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 I quite agree with you. There's absolutely no reason for this disparity. Aspect. Well, it's also um, important to note that, you know, over the years since uh, Chibok and Dapchi, uh, not very much seems to have changed you know, with regards, you know, being able to protect school children. Yeah. Uh, we haven't improved, you know, on our security tactics or security app um, apparatus. Yeah. We haven't improved in any way. And kids are still very much in danger in Nigeria. So not much has changed. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the controversy over the yeah. NECO registrar's Nothing death. Nothing has changed. Um, there's um, those who say that he was assassinated. You know, NECO put out a statement saying he died after a brief illness. Um, you, why can't we get any clarity? The same question we asked that why hasn't a post-mortem been done? 
a simple autopsy will tell us the cause of the death. We, we, we like I said, we, we like to complement seemingly simple issues, okay? The most reliable source of information that will authenticate cause of death is an autopsy. If it was assassinated, where is the proof? Where is the evidence? If it died after a brief illness, what was the nature of the illness? Okay, we, we, we live in a country where there is so much, um, a lot of things are shrouded in secrecy, especially concerning public officials. I begin to wonder what is the big deal? Okay, why is, it, why is it so difficult for us to get exactly the truth of the What really killed him? So, if the family is saying right, after a brief illness, why don't you believe that? Why do we want to come up with complicity theories? It was assassinated by who? Who has the proof? Who has the evidence? So, Mr. So Kimbala, personally, really... I would like to go with the line yeah. that the family has come out that died out. Yes. I, th I think this issue is. Yes, please. This issue seems more complicated because the news reports we saw online said that the wife of, yeah. you know, Professor Godswill um, had said that um, these assassins came into the house, they simply killed him, and they took nothing. They just left. But the next morning, we saw a message from Neko that said that the son had forwarded a message to them saying the father died of a heart failure or a heart attack. It, it wasn't clear. But the story that really tips the skills for me is the Nigerian Tribune. It says, police guard Neko registrar's residence in Mina as son says yeah. father died during briefing. So why would the police need to guard the house if he, if he had died of natural causes? Just, just a question there that we need yeah. to ask. Don't you think? Yeah, as a result of the controversy that has now, um, yeah, because now there's a controversy surrounding the death, the police need to guard the residence, maybe to forestall tampering with evidence, okay? So the police probably would not want to sweep under the carpet uh, the, 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 the claim that it was assassinated, all right? So apparently the police want to try to investigate, cut off the residence, prevent anybody from tampering any evidence, while the investigation continues. So it's an interesting development uh, which we look forward to uh, unfolding more in the days to come. But as we speak, like I said, the son sent a message that his father died after a brief illness. The wife said he was assassinated. Okay, can we have an autopsy? I'm sure the cops has not disappeared. The body of this gentleman has not disappeared. Let's conduct an autopsy. And that will solve the riddle for me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I think we can also uh, quickly speak on uh, the uh, Laotech uh, issue. Uh, Governor Makinde slashing school fees in Laotech by 25%. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago, actually, Laotech has been, you know, in, in years and years of, you know, one crisis or the other. Uh, Shea Makinde seems to be doing a little different or doing a little better. Uh, the governor before him, yeah. like, uh, Jim Obi, um, had a totally different reaction to, mm. you know, the agitations in Laotech. Mm. Um, so, quick thoughts on that one before we wrap up. My question is, is this sustainable? Was it a decision he took in order to be politically correct? Or did he do his homework and discover that the state government could do with that 25% reduction? I, 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 I am not sure that that decision is sustainable. We know the way things are in Nigeria today. For you to slash school fees, then what is the budget that you have earmarked for this institution? What is the quality of the education that's being delivered there? Okay, I have no problem with fees being slashed, but you don't do things because you want to be in the good book of the students or because you want to um, uh, be seen to be doing the right thing. Is this sustainable? I mean, in this state economy where inflation is rising, purchasing power is dwindling, I, 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 I do not see how the government will be able to sustain it. But if they're able to, good news. All right. Okay. Good news if they're able to. But I doubt it. All right. I doubt it. So still talking about education, about yeah. we know that um, the Senate has approved the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro to become a university. And still about education. Another story yeah. here um, that we're seeing uh, about uh, a school. I'm trying to get that story out now. But uh, yes, it's a full year. Um, um, Foyer suspends lecturer over alleged sexual harassment and another on the probe. 
So it um, seems like we're making quite some, some headway um, regarding the sex for grades issue, especially. We know that when that documentary by the BBC came out, yeah. it put a lot of light on you know, lecturers in universities, people who are supposed to be custodians mm -hmm. of the students who you know, break that trust. So um, um, what are your comments on what the school here is doing? And also, on the other hand, about the upgrade of that Ilari Polytechnic to a university? OK, um, sex for grades has been with us forever. I mean, I think um, social media and technology is probably helping us to, 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 to discover so many things. And I still believe that we are yet to even scratch the surface, OK? Um, whatever discovery has been made, now it's probably maybe 1%. Mm. It's still going on as we speak, and it is going to end very soon due to so many reasons, OK? Uh, we have students this day who don't believe in studying. Um, we have students who don't have time, who, who believe in um money can get them anything they want or, the, or they use their body so it's commendable for four years to have done that and i'll just advise them not to relent and other institutions too should intensify efforts to ensure that um those lecturers who are involved in such practices are identified the upgrade of federal protecting pilaro to university good but what is driving that decision yeah. Yeah. university for what okay Technology, what aspect of technology? Okay, right, the federal right. project in Laro as it is, just like the other Nigerian institution, is struggling. So when you upgrade, are you going to give them more money for research? Are you going to give them more money for equipment? Or is this just an upgrade because we want to look good? So I, 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 I'm not going to be dancing or jubilating because it's been it, it, it upgraded. So the techniques were set up for specific for specific purposes. If you're going to upgrade the universe of technology, then you need to do your own work. You need to make sure that you have money to fund research. Technology involves research, innovation, ideas, incubation. Do we have the money to fund all of this? Do we have the structures? Okay. okay. So for me, uh, it, it's it's not too much of a sharing is for me. I mean, for those who want to profit from such system. For those who want to score political points, good luck to them. But when you look at these issues realistically, with the knowledge of what has been happening in Nigeria, it, 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 it's nothing um, to, 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 to jump around. All right, let, let's talk, you know, let's go Funny. back uh, to the Southeast. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, there's sure. a story on the uh, Tribune this morning saying uh, Southeast governors call for a probe into Ahmed Gulak's uh, death. Um, so I want you to speak with regards to yeah. Southeast governors and, you know, the role that they are expected to play at a time like this when the Southeast seems to be, um, you know, suffering its worst, um, you know, security challenges in a very, very long time. There's also been a Twitter hashtag, questions for Uzodima, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, went on yesterday and people questioning, you know, his, you know, role, you know, and, um, you know, the, the role that he is expected to have played. Um, you know, in these times, and also, you know, who invited Gulak to the States, who was meant to escort him to the airport, you know, and some of all those questions. So quickly speak on the responsibility of the Southeast governors and where they may have done well or failed. Okay. Do you know that those who killed Gulak might not, might not even have known him or, or, or they might not have known who he was? A lot of people have been killed in Southeast in the last one week. So Gulag might just have been another of those victims. So I really want us to be careful not to not to um, spin conspiracy theories around this assassination. If it were a country where we had, where we had a very good police force, effective, they probably investigate and get to the matter. Southeast governors at this point need to come together. It's not about uh, PDD versus APC. It's not about Uzondima versus Urepa. They need to come together because what is going on there it, it's mind-boggling. A businessman was killed in broad daylight. I think I saw the video. So these deaths are becoming too, 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 too frequent. So they need to tighten the security. They need to work together as a unit. I wouldn't expect anybody to sit down in his cozy office and begin to say, why did they come? Gulag had the right to go to anywhere. Who sent him? It, 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 it's immaterial. What he went to do there is immaterial. He could have gone on a private business. He could have gone on a political assignment. That is not the issue. The issue is that the security situation is worse in the Southeast, and the government is going to talk about it. 
the earlier they face the reality to come together and and and, and, and tackle that issue, the better. Not to be in putting motives into who killed him, who was supposed to escort him. Anything could have happened. Okay. And Gulag's life is not in any way more important than the other lives that have been lost. So I, I, I want us to look at the whole issue holistically in terms of insecurity in the southeast without necessarily single out any individual. Yeah. Okay. That's so my view. another story here is um, about. Um, people have been killed. Okay. Another story here on the Punch newspaper, also on the Guardian newspaper, is saying that um, NANS, National Association of Nigerian Students, have declared June 12th a day of protest. And um, they're basically saying they are, they're, they're going to protest against the worsening insecurity of, in Nigeria, the kidnapping, the banditry, um, kidnap of over 200 students in, in Niger State. So they're saying... Um, June 11th will be a day for students' prayers. They offer prayers for all the students who have lost their lives. June 12th will be a national day of peaceful protest and call on the government to act and, you know, proactively um, and create a strategy towards ens ensuring safer schools. Now, what's the essence of, or why are they celebrating democracy when many students are in the den of kidnappers? Um, this, is, this is a story here. What do you think about it, Mr. Akimola? Okay. My question to Nance would be, what is the average age of criminals in Nigeria today? Arm robbers, bandits, kidnappers, what is the average age? They are youths. So the protest is good, but more importantly, Nance will sensitize youth in Nigeria to stay away from crime. Mm. Over 80% of criminal activities in Nigeria have been perpetrated by young people in the early 20s, teenagers. So now should find a way of getting involved in the various security arrangements because the protest will come and go, insecurity will remain. Mm. So the protest is one thing that they can do. More importantly, they need to get involved, vigilante activities, or, or orientation, reorientation. Our youths have completely lost hope and confidence in themselves that they embrace crime at the drop of the hat. So I do not know what that protest will achieve. I, 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 I do not see it as anything that's going to be effective. It's going to be yet another protest. Beyond the protest, I will expect the NAS leadership to find a way of coming up with, 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 with activities that will help youth to reduce their criminal tendencies. Okay. That's my view. All right, Mr. Adimola Akimbola, publisher, The Podium Media. We appreciate you for making time to join us this morning on Off the Press on The Breakfast. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and have a beautiful Wednesday ahead. Thank you. Um, I was going to quickly mention the NANS president is not necessarily a youth, but uh, uh, we are where we are. Stay with us. What happened on this day in history, the 2nd of June? I'm talking something uh, sports-related. If you remember, one of the most popular uh, presidents of FIFA. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about him a little bit this morning. And uh, something that came as close to being as deadly as the coronavirus outbreak in Africa in 2020.